Hello Interwebs, welcome to Board Repair Basics. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you a condensed version of a liquid damaged MacBook Pro I had in for repair a while back. So I will be posting a full video for this repair, um, but in the meantime, I will show you the condensed version and how I discovered the fault with it. So what we have is a stone dead laptop with no green light on the charger. So we've got exactly the symptoms but that we've been discussing in previous videos. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the back cover off of the laptop and we're gonna take some measurements to check if our vital rails are present. So those vital rails being PP bus G3 hot and PP3 V42. So let's get those covers off. Right, so that comes off of the U7000, which is probably in the wrong place. To be honest, if I just search for PP bus underscore G3 hot on the board view, we'll come up with half a dozen places immediately. Yeah, here we go. So we've got some spots around here that we can look at. Let's go for this one down here. Cool, right, let's zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this resistor here has PP bus G3 hot on the bottom of it. So we're going to put one probe onto ground and one probe to there. So when I measured PP bus G3 hot, I got 12.3 volts. This tells me two things. Firstly, that there is indeed power getting to the board despite the lack of green light. Uh, and also that the DC jack is probably okay because we have PP bus G3 hot. However, 12.3 is too low for PP bus G3 hot on this particular board. It should be 12.6. And this tells me that the SMC is not running because it is the SMC that will boost PP bus G3 hot from 12.3 up to 12.6. So upon removing the board from the laptop, we find that the top half of it, which is hidden under the keyboard, is grotty as hell. So the first thing we're gonna do is just simply brush it down with a paintbrush just so we can see what we're doing. We're then gonna remove the heatsink and a couple of other bits and bobs just so we can get a clearer picture of what we're looking at and give ourselves a better chance at spotting damage to the board. After cleaning, we can now get a better picture of the board and look for sketchy areas. And we can immediately see that there is a sketchy area at the back of the board, exactly where, what I warned you about in the previous videos. So these are the first places to get hit and there's a lot of important stuff along there. So we're gonna check our schematics to find out what that area is that has visible corrosion on it. Okay, so, so on the board view, we've got a small chip down here, um, and this is SMC SIS LED. Okay, so we've immediately got something that goes to the SMC down here, which is a poor start. Well, it's good towards us finding out what's wrong. What about these? These are all sketchy as hell. SMC manual reset, uh, PP3V42, which is SMC power. So basically, Everything that powers and resets the SMC is messed up on this side of the board, and we're wondering why the SMC is not turning on. Yeah. So yes, I think we found the source of our problem. Our SMC does not switch on because it's probably in reset mode. So let's see if we can prove that the SMC is in reset mode. So what we're gonna do, we're going to put power onto the board again. We're going to find the SMC, and we're going to check if it's in reset mode. Mm -hmm. I need to know what the SMC chip name is because I can't remember. Oh, U4900. So U4900, U4900. Right, where are you? So the SMC is on the other side of the board. It's on the top half of the board, which is incidentally on the other side of where we're looking at here. So let's flip that over. All right, so that's our SMC. Okay, so here is our SMC. Let's find where the reset pin is. So I'm gonna quickly scroll down the list of its connections on the side here, and we're looking for SMC reset. SMC reset L, that's the one I want. So SMC reset L, so the low means low. So when this signal is low, or otherwise not there, it is in reset mode. So 
let's so we will find SMC reset at this fella here next to it. See the actual pin is under the chip. We can't we can't measure it from there, but we can measure it from these connections it has nearby. So the U5010 is next door, and we can measure it from there. Um, I'm going to rotate this view around so it's the same orientation as the board. Right, so the U5010. Okay, so this little fella here, so here's our SMC. This fella here next door to it handles the SMC reset signal. So um, right up in the corner, we're going to find the reset signal for that. So uh, pin 5 which actually looks darkened, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah. Um, so pin 5, we should find about 3.3 volts here. Huh. The multimeter twitched, but I'm not actually seeing any power there. Is there an easier place to check this from? Where else does it connect to? You can also find it on pin 24 of the JTAG connector, which is very easy to read from. So that's the fourth pin from the bottom right of this fella here. So let's try that. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so SMC reset L is low. There is no voltage there. So that means our SMC is in reset mode, which is exactly what we were expecting to see. Um, and we ain't going to get anything if the SMC is in reset mode. So the first thing we're going to do is clean up that sketchy looking area there. And we're just going to see what comes back on. So in order to clean up this corroded area, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol, which is basically premium rubbing alcohol. I'm going to squirt a little bit of it onto a toothbrush and just gently brush the area. So as you can see, I'm just giving that a quick once over. We're not scrubbing, we're just brushing the corrosion away just to clear the area up so we can get a closer look at everything. This capacitor here looks pretty messed up. The dark ends are a giveaway that it's bad. Uh, the, ends of these, uh, SMC, the, the ends of these surface mount components should be nice and shiny. Okay. If they've darkened, that's a classic sign that there's a problem with yeah. that component. Dark is bad, it should be shiny. Um, however, it may still work. So let's just see if anything powers up now we've cleaned that up. I wonder, is there actually a connection to SMC reset there? Yeah, see SMC reset L does appear there. And as soon as we plug a charger in, we immediately get a green light and fan spin, which means we are successful. The fan spin is a classic indicator that you've won because it means the board has reached an SO state, which is powered on. That means everything is online and it is ready to boot. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure SMC reset L, which is one, two, three, it's there, I think. And as you can see, we have 3.4 volts at SMC reset L. So SMC reset L is high because there is voltage there, which means the SMC is not in reset mode. And then finally, for good measure, if we measure PP bus G3 hot, we'll now find that it's now at 12.6 or 12.57 instead of 12.3, which tells us that the SMC is on and active because when the SMC switches on, it bumps that voltage up slightly. Um, I've no idea, I'm not sure why it bumps the voltage up slightly, okay. it just does, it yeah. just tells it to go up a bit. So there we go. And now the fan's going into panic mode because there's nothing connected to the board. Um, but yeah, right, we're done, we're reassembling. So to summarise this episode, we looked at a real life scenario where we had a stone dead board that just simply had the tiniest bit of corrosion, probably caused by a little bit of damp or liquid that had crept in and stayed there due to a lot of dust and grit. However, it had hit the SMC reset L signal, so our SMC was stuck in reset mode. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Board Repair Basics. Um, do check out the rest of the repair video on the example that I showed you today. There was actually a little bit more to it than that. However, we were finished with the board repair itself. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, I will see you next time. Thank you very much.